Good afternoon, Whoa. ladies and gentlemen. It is Wednesday, September 2nd, 2020, and you have tuned into the Rebel News live stream. Now, normally, if it's a Monday, Wednesday, or Friday, you see the big boss man himself, Ezra Levant, in this chair, but Ezra's working on an extra special caper, and he needs some uh, additional time in which to do it. So, I am joined not by my usual lovely co-host, Sheila the She-Devil Gunreed, but by High Energy Andrew Says. How are you doing today, Andrew? You almost touched me there, David. We're not getting off to a good start. <laughs> oh, okay? sorry. I'm doing well. I'm glad to be here. I'm glad to be accepting your super chats. Just a couple dollars uh, to get any questions or comments you want on air. Any compliments or insults to David Menzies? Usually it's insults, to be honest here. <laughs> and uh, we're glad to talk to you about some recent stories, both from our website, our channel, and around the world. Fantastic. From coast to coast, as they would say. Straight down to business then. And um, I, I understand from Mr. Producer, we already have a keener with a super chat to begin the show with. It's good and, to get them in early, you know. And, and by the way, have we adequately explained what it is that we're hoping to do here, Andrew, that um, we're going to be talking about the issues of the day, but a super chat, by definition, well, you have to pay for it. And the more you pay, the more characters you have. And it's our way, folks, of uh, keeping uh, the lights on and the staff employed. We don't take it directly out of your paycheck, like the $1.5 billion for the CBC, the $595 million plus for the uh, print uh, newspapers. Then there's the magazine fund, and then there's McLean's Magazine. It, you know, they just, you know, go by a process of what's it called that Rogers did back in 1994. Oh yeah, negative option billing. <laughs> they just take it right out of your paycheck. We ask for a donation. If you don't want to donate or you can't donate, we understand. But if you can, we appreciate it. And it's completely voluntary. Isn't that right, my friend? We may not know, but David Menzies is, I think, two days away from having his eviction notice. Um, <laughs> his lights are already off. He can't feed his family. Um, and that's just from his gambling addiction. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, <laughs> well, I do buy the occasional lottery ticket. I wouldn't call it an addiction. And, uh, but I, uh, that was an example of CBC-style fake news. Folks. I'm not Lying on up the at the gas station, addiction. buying those 25-cent things? <laughs> no, no Anyways. Never, gone, never gone that far. That's, that will be my jump-the-shark moment when I start buying what are they called, Kino tickets? I don't know. You know? Oh, you're pretending not to know. I don't know the actual a good name strategy. Of him. Right? <laughs> right now, he's only down to like betting on high school track events. <laughs> Kane and Mark, ten dollars. I am going to wear my MAGA hat every day until the third of November because of Jay Bishop. I believe that's the person who shot in Portlandia. Um, if anyone wants to, or Wisconsin, Portland. If anyone wants to wear their MAGA hat too, I'm having a beer at Rose and Crowns YYC Fourth Street on Friday at happy hour. So David will be there. <laughs> I volunteered you. Well, hopefully it's one of the establishments that is still in business. I mean, there's been some brutal fallout thanks to our response for the uh, Wuhan virus. But, you know, November 3rd, tomorrow is September 3rd. So if we do the math, that is precisely two months away. Uh, from the election day. And w what are your thoughts on that? I, I came across uh, a fascinating article. Uh, forgive me, I can't remember the individual's name, but he has called 25 out mm. of 27 American elections correct. And the only two he didn't get right was the year 2000, which, as you know, went down to the state of Florida by, you know, George Bush and Al Gore. Uh, it was in, you know, racehorse terms, a photo finish. Uh, and he had lent, uh, he was leaning towards Gore. That was his pick. And it could have gone that way. And the only other one he got wrong was um, Kennedy Nixon. Uh, also a very close election and a lot of, um, you know, allegations of voter improprieties happening that way. He's done the math, and not only is he saying it's a Donald Trump victory, it's a Donald Trump landslide. What do you think about that, High Energy Andrew says? I think, David, that recently from what I've seen in comparison to the polls from 2016 uh, to now, Biden, obviously they're going to lean to Biden still. They still want it to appear, to appear as if they're oh, going to Oh, when you say win. they, you mean the mainstream media. I do. Of course. They, yeah. The powers that be. Um, they have Biden winning by lesser margins than Hillary, which obviously they've, they're trying to manage their lives this time. So I think it's probably going to be California, Washington, and um, Oregon voting for Biden. And then probably you got some in the Northeast where there's a, they're a little bit more liberal. And, I, and probably Hawaii, Hawaii even. <laughs> and that's probably it. 
Yeah. I mean, I would have said that um, when the COVID stuff was in its in its heyday, that things were looking not as good for Trump. But as they've come out and not condemned the riots, and then overnight they're just like, oh, wait a minute, riots are bad now, everybody. Tell Trudeau and to everybody to say it as well. Everybody's sort of seeing that, that they're full of it. So it's not looking good well, for them. But there's uh, still two months left. Yeah, I, I think the Democrat Party, I'm sorry, uh, has been downright evil in recent months. Uh, first of all, not acknowledging that these riots exist, calling it peaceful protests. Finally, when being forced to acknowledge, you know, the brutality, the vandalism, the arson, even the death toll on the ground, uh, then blaming it on Donald Trump. So it went from non-existent to this is a result of President Trump. Uh, it, it's absolutely despicable. Everything, they want the carnage, I think, Andrew, on the streets. They want all this vitriol, all this chaos, because they're going to position themselves as, look what you got with brand A, choose brand B, and we'll get this uh, cleaned up. Uh, and a lot of this is happening in Democrat-controlled states Pretty much and all cities. of it. Yeah. In Democrat cities. Yeah. And this is what they hoped for, but it's really backfired. And I contest yeah. that, or contend, I don't know, that the Democrats are the worst party in Western society. They're worse than the Liberals. They're worse than the NDP. They're worse than Corbyn's party out in the UK because they have them all under the same umbrella. They have to keep the crooked people along with the communists and somehow mesh together. And it just comes out with each side, set, both factions within their own party have their own set of lies that then they have to try to mold into a grander lie for it to make sense, and it doesn't. We want to raise all your taxes, but also everything should be free. It doesn't really make sense, and we have more Super Chats just piling in. It oh. must be because you look so good today in your suit. Oh, thank you. Speaking of looking good today in a suit, I don't know if you saw <laughs> producer, cameraman, editor Mocha. He's wearing a suit today. If Mocha, if you're watching, come in and let us take a look at you. Yeah, the Turk was looking really sharp today. Well, that's racist. Oh, racist! <laughs> Great informer, $5. George Soros <laughs> leaves his house to seek shelter from the rain. Justin Trudeau used a broom to enter the sweepstakes. These are like fortune cookies. <laughs> Sneaky Beaver, $5. My next car is a pickup truck, guys. Cheers, Menzoid and Andrew and Justin in the back. Justin, <laughs> JT, getting some love. Great informer, $2. Joe Biden watched the Dolphins game at SeaWorld. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> That's not bad. This guy's pumping these out right now. Another $5. Justin Trudeau does not give a hoot about the owl. Elizabeth Warren flies an Apache helicopter to the Navajo <laughs> reservation. <laughs> Lisa Proust, $2. I saw, I saw Lisa Proust getting flirted with in the chat by somebody else in there. Some uh, matchmaking going on in the chat. I don't know. I, I think I'm falling in love with Lisa Proust. She's so dedicated. She's always uh, chipping in on the uh, Super Chat. So well, there you go. $2, keep up the good work, $2 Lisa. $2 just for David, just because he she admires your courage. Mocha, get oh, in there here. there you go. Okay, Stay here right we go. Stay right between us. Now, take a look at this. I, I don't know if Turkey it's has like a Boston version bomber. <laughs> of, uh, of GQ or uh, Vanity Fair, but... Uh, Look at that. Isn't that, isn't that fantastic? Mocha, did you see Drea Humphreys' Jessica Yaniv video? Jonathan Yaniv video? I haven't seen it yet. I'm you're not mic'd up, uh, Mocha, so you're going to have to like... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I haven't seen it yet because I was editing another Drea video. Okay. I was busy. I was working. So, Jonathan Jessica Yaniv has changed her name to <laughs> Jessica Simpson. Not to be confused with the pop star. Um, but if we can queue up Drea's video here for Mocha to view for the first time ever, this is a world exclusive in Mocha's mind. I think this video has been up for a day. Uh, more to come in the Jessica Jonathan, Jessica Rabbit Simpson. And, and before you do, uh, in case people don't know who Mocha is, Mocha is one of our ace cameramen and an incredible editor. He's the one that was responsible for yesterday's tribute to uh, Terry Fox. Believe me, with that edit, uh, Mocha was doing all the heavy lifting there. You know, there was a... Uh, there was a horror movie in the 70s that came out called Phantasm, and it had a tagline, if this one doesn't scare you, you're already dead. Well, I'll tell you, if you watch that Terry Fox tribute and you don't get a little tear in your eyes, well, you're made out of granite, I think. But this is the man that was responsible for that remarkable piece, so Thank that you is who Moke is. Thank you for your kind words. You're right. Now, as my uncle used to say to me, um, uh, be brief, be gone, be good. Well, Not necessarily in that order, but I think I screwed that up. Can we get a super <laughs> chat pointing out how rude David Menzies is? <laughs> We're just trying to throw to a video here. He can't wait. He's got to kick out Mocha <laughs> right away. 
He's got a. I want to watch the video. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> David can't have anyone stealing his spotlight. Precious <laughs> David Menzies. Justin, do we have the video? Now, wow, despite me being new to the team here at Rebel, Yaniv knew exactly who I was. You may not be able to hear it, but as soon as he saw me, he said, that's Rebel Media to Mommy Yaniv. Drea Humphrey here with Rebel News, and I'm here to report to you the latest of the never-ending saga that is Jonathan Yaniv. Except apparently it's no longer Jonathan Yaniv. In fact, it's no longer Jessica Yaniv. You see, the individual who takes pride in extorting immigrant women who won't shave her male genitalia to earn a living goes by the name of Jessica Simpson now. You can see the new surname here on the recent civil court document where Yaniv is now suing three of his previous esthetician victims again. I guess it doesn't matter to Yaniv that he lost already due to his disturbing conduct against the hardworking women and was condemned by the judge of the BC Human Rights Tribunal just last year. Nope, Yaniv is out for blood, suing his victims to pay him back the $2,000 each that the judge ruled Yaniv paid to each woman due to the conduct against him. It's hard to keep up. You need the changing names on paper. It really doesn't change the sort of individual predator Yaniv is, no matter how many times he changes his name. But that isn't what the appearance here today was about. This is going to be a long and crazy video with lots of twists and turns. But would you expect anything less when we're dealing with Jonathan Yaniv? If you'd like to see all of our coverage about Jonathan Yaniv and his reign of terror, please go to yanivtrial.com. Now, Yaniv was here today for not one, but two other reasons that showcase just how dangerous of an individual he is. The first appearance scheduled today in room 100 at 9 a.m. was to be for the assault against my colleague, Kian Bexty. Kian was simply reporting and asking a very simple question from a distance, I might add, and Yaniv trotted over and pummeled Kian right in the head in front of this very own courthouse in Surrey, BC. I'm not exactly sure what is worse. Is it that or what happened to David Menzies when he was hacked over the head with a pink metal cane? You're going to go away. I know. Don't touch me. You're going to jail. How is this person not already locked up? The second appearance of the day was scheduled in room 102 for 9.30 a.m. to deal with Yaniv Simpson sentencing for possessing a prohibited weapon. You know, the taser he flaunted during the interview with the popular transgender woman YouTuber named Blair White. I'm going to talk, I'm gonna... which is illegal in Canada, just then. Today, both Yaniv and Simpson and Mummy Yaniv were escorted by a handful of police officers to the front of the courthouse. You'd think that the people around them were more of a threat than them, if you didn't know any better. Now, Well, you know, the first thing I gotta say, um, Andrew, is that has the Wuhan virus not been brutal to Jonathan Yaniv? I mean, did you see that LaBunza? It's Jessica Simpson, actually. Yeah, Jessica Simpson. By the way, Mr. Producer, if you can call up an image of the actual Jessica Simpson, because I don't know about you, Andrew, I can't tell the difference between Are Jonathan Are you denying and her truth, <laughs> David Menzies? <laughs> but, or maybe, do you think that Jonathan Yaniv is pregnant? I mean, he did post several months ago, he went to a swimming pool, and you remember he couldn't go for a swim, folks, because he was experiencing his first menstrual period. Uh, I'm not making this up. You don't have to make anything up with this uh, con artist. Uh, yeah, Looks there the you same. go. There's the American actress, uh, Jessica Simpson. Um, remember that old ad, uh, Andrew? Can you tell the difference? I can't tell the difference. Now bring up a picture <laughs> for the movie Junior. <laughs> when Arnold Schwarzenegger is pregnant. Arnold, oh, what are you doing? You're pregnant. Can you pregnant? Um, you know, it was interesting you, you brought up Junior. Junior was... <laughs> yeah, I got a little Junior story for you. Um, 
at the time, of course, Angel Schwarzenegger is... Angela Schwarzenegger? Well, I'm a Freudian slip. Number one box office draw, especially amongst the male demographic. And the thinking by the studio heads was, if we can do kind of a chick flick, if we could do a movie that appeals to females, this will be the biggest grossing movie of all time in Hollywood. And what, but they outsmarted themselves. First of all, guys like me that want to see Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, fighting androids and predators, <laughs> we stayed away in droves. The idea of a man being pregnant, that, that's alien kind of scary in a bad way. And uh, women didn't like the idea either, so it was a huge box office bomb. Maybe it recovered its budget through video uh, releases, DVDs, what have you. But um, that's my junior story. But yeah, and you know, I wonder if oh. Jonathan... <laughs> Jonathan is trying to be this hot Jessica Simpson he type is. chick. Well, then why is he buying his clothes at like uh, Maternity Depot R Us? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, even Sheila's made mention of that. Th th this is the kind of haberdashery you'd see women in their 70s wearing, uh, not this uh, supposed uh, fashion plate. Uh, just unbelievable. What's your take, Andrew, on this recent... Um, trip to the court trough to try to... Court trough. Yeah. Per, you know, I mean, because even... The, I mean, folks, if the British Columbia Human Rights Tribunal, which is the worst human rights tribunal in Canada, if even they have rejected his claims and did the unprecedented move of awarding the three of the victims $2,000 damages each for their costs, if they've... Uh, thrown this out. I can't imagine a real court of law, Andrew, giving this 10 minutes. Well, I think that he's a beautiful woman <laughs> and that we need to get them into some sort of wrestling environment with <laughs> Jonathan and managed by his mother. There would be perfect promos going on. Shout out to Drea Humphrey there, though, yes. going out, sacrificing herself to get this video because Nobody wants to look at these people. <laughs> and super chat us if you got a message for Dre Humphrey. I'll personally send it to her via our work chat. Uh, we know Dre Humphrey's got a lot of fans now. Surpassed me on Twitter, so you guys can help me out with that by following mm -hmm. me on Twitter. There you go. Um, that's my plea to everybody. No, Dre did a great job on that. Um, kind of wish she didn't play that uh, clip of me getting the cane smashed over my head PTSD? five times. That PTSD, indeed. And I should say, about six weeks ago, and that video already went up, Andrew, I, and we got a tip that was 100% accurate. It was Jonathan Yaniv and Mama Yaniv going to the Pantages Hotel because he had been catfished by a woman pretending to have a daughter at Sick Kids Hospital. And allegedly, this sick puppy, based on no phone call, no video, nothing, but just the rumor that there was a woman with a sick daughter, he flew all the way with mama, because you always bring your mama with you when you're gonna prey on a minor, to Toronto to try to get into Sick Kids Hospital to be alone, presumably, in a room, a hospital room, uh, with this ailing child. And, of course, I encountered him and his mother uh, coming outside of the Pantages Theatre. By the way, they drop their belongings, and what rolls out is, like, <laughs> toilet rolls that they have stolen <laughs> from the hotel. It was so embarrassing. But here's what gets me. What the point of my story is, is this guy... There's a point? Yes, there is a point, Ed. He keeps dodging the bullet in terms of criminal uh, prosecution. He phoned 911 that day. I'm just on a sidewalk. I've got my selfie stick out. I'm just asking questions, folks. I'm just asking questions. Oh, just, just a harmless journalist. His report to 911, and this was witnessed by an eyewitness that overheard the conversation, is that I had pulled out a handgun and was pointing it at his mother. And the only reason I didn't get arrested, uh, this is what he said later in social media, is that I had taken the handgun and thrown it down a sewer grate when I saw the police cruisers arriving. Well, folks, not only did the handgun not exist, there's not even a sewer grate next Reporter to the Reporter David Menzies had a grenade launcher <laughs> present. And you know, the thing is, Andrew, wouldn't you know, that really stymie law enforcement, 
Well, both, we uh, pulled up, but the gunman threw a gun down the sewer. Guess there's nothing we can do now. <laughs> Why does he have a lisp? I don't get it. We got a lot of super chats. I'm doing Bubba Bue. Oh, okay. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> um, where are we here? Great Informer, another riddle for us for $2. Trudeau ordered a BLT without bacon, lettuce, and tomato. He's really going to get the David Menzies vote here. Another $10. Patriots, please support Rebel News, not Rebel Media, you guys. Judicial Watch, as well as Gun Owners of America and any independent content creator that is getting the truth out. We are the news now. Now we are the news. <laughs> uh, well, I'm sorry. My gun, as you know, folks, is at the bottom of a sewer grate right that's now. That's <laughs> true. You've lost it forever. Um, a $35 donation from Jezevich, I'm going to say is how you pronounce it, but thank you. Great Informer, $5. Rosie O'Donnell uses cheat codes for We Fit. <laughs> Justin Trudeau believes Bill and Ted's excellent adventure was a bogus journey. It was, and I believe there's a new one that's out or that's coming That's right, out. yes. Fancy enough. Speaking of Keanu, Keanu recently affirmed my stance that The Matrix is not about transgenderism and said, apparently, this is what um, editor Dave told me, that Keanu said he had no idea it was about transgenderism. Weird, he works on movie, movies for like five years and it never came up that this is what the movie's actually about. Almost as if it wasn't. Yeah, well those two brothers slash his sisters, there's something not computi uh, computing there. And, and by the way folks, as much as Andrew and I like to bust each other's chops, watch his video on The Matrix and the, I guess, what can we call it, the revisionist history yes. going on right now, Andrew. Uh, it's, it's a superb video and I mean, what a way to, um, I guess, promote the idea, because there is another Matrix movie coming out. Yes. And I think, and I'm, this is not an anti-trans thing, but let, you know, transgendered people is a percent of a percent of a percent of the population. And if you're getting the message out there that this is all about transgenderism, I think you're gonna turn off the majority of the movie ticket buying public. If, if there's, it's not in theaters, then they're screwed because if it's just on, they'll get people going in like opening night on mass because it's because it's the Matrix. They'll be stoned out of their minds. They'll be going to the Matrix. <laughs> but if it's just digital, then people are gonna be like, "Don't watch it. It's garbage." I yeah. think it'll do really bad that way. Kane and Mark, two dollars. Dre rocks. She's the hottest. She is the hottest rebel. Passing you then, David, potentially? <laughs> um, Meredith McDonald, $25. That's a big one. Thank you. Mocha did a wonderful job on the Terry Fox video. Great work, Thank people. You. Great work, Rebel people, on all your work. Yes, it was a great video. I wanted us to release Terry Fox shirts. Apparently, the Terry Fox Foundation has the rights to that. So. Oh, well, and you know, and, and, and that's fair. And uh, listen, the Terry Fox Foundation folks, uh, from what began as a uh, a little event uh, with launched with not a lot of fanfare uh, 40 years ago in St. John's, Newfoundland, and then became a, a phenomenon. Uh, you know, Terry's dream was if he could only, there's 25 million people in Canada back then, if he could only get $25 million, that's not an impossible goal. Well, today in 2020, the, through the Terry Fox Foundation, they have raised more than 700 hundred million for cancer. I think that's fantastic. And when I was a kid, there was always the Terry Fox run every single year. There were some people who just walked because you were allowed and some people who ran and took it seriously. That was me. It, All competitions really? matter. Uh, you have to try. You mean you weren't on your inline skates for that one? Inline skates? <laughs> 1980 though, that would have made you what, 65 at the time? Yeah, yeah, that's right. So I'm 105 right now, folks. <laughs> <laughs> like Mr. Burns. Observer dude, five pounds. You need his mom accused David of misgendering him, but she refers to Jonathan as well. Yes, several times he it, ref she refers to his own daughter as a, as a he. It, it, it is astonishing. She, you know, is always on me about misgendering uh, the boy, and yet she always uses the male pronouns, he and him. I, you know, she, it's a confusing they, time. Yeah, they, they, they can't get their narrative straight. You know? <laughs> Uh, Lisa Proust for $2 says, can I hire Mocha for September 12th Montreal protest? I mean, probably that not. He's employed here, but uh, Mocha's famous, you guys. I don't know if you know this, but he's got a YouTube yeah. channel with hundreds of thousands of subscribers and millions of views. It's just mostly in Turkish. You can still watch it with subtitles. I encourage it. Yes. Now, David, let's get to this crazy video that I believe... But actually, before we oh, do... Oh, okay. Because wow. I, I, this is what I always query other staff members here. What I'm trying to figure out about the Yaniv's. Uh, well, there's two things. One is, as it doesn't matter what the story is, folks, entertainment, sports, you name it, politics, follow the money. I'm trying to figure out, 
Andrew, where is this money coming from? These endless legal challenges flying across the country. Um, it, it, they don't appear to be gainfully employed. I believe they both have separate uh, nice condominiums in British Columbia. Uh, that's one thing. And two, I'm trying to figure out the end goal. Is this part of some massive con or is it oh, more so. than that? It's a con, you know, to, you know, get money out of people in such an egregious fashion. But there's also a degree, both with mother and son, of mental illness here. That, that's as far as I can figure things they out. They probably get disability, uh, old age pension and whatever he claims. Don't know that for sure. And then a couple hundred thousand followers on social media probably done a GoFundMe or two. And then maybe some sort of trans activist group gives him slash he money. And then you have to consider the fact that maybe uh, David Menzies is in cahoots with him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that, that, that's my evil I'm plan. still going with the conspiracy no, that this is all the con to expose <laughs> the human rights <laughs> violations as wow. crappy, crappy laws. David, we have to get if to this video. Were. Okay. 35,000 more videos to get to. This was shared by Paul Joseph Watson and Ezra Levant about an Aussie mom who was oh. arrested in her home for posting a an event, I believe, or at least a post about an event to have an anti-lockdown protest. As you know, they're on full lockdown. Producer John Tavares in the back, can we get to that, please? Um, yeah, you can show me your search warrant before you go through my house. Yeah, I own this house. Yeah, it is. Search warrant. Search warrant for what? Now, what I will explain to you is, is if you want to listen, you got your phone going. Yeah, I do, yeah. Right. Now, you're under arrest in relation to incitement. Incitement? Yeah. So, now, you're not obliged to say or do anything, but anything you say or do may be given in evidence. Excuse me, incitement for what? What the, What on earth? Yeah. Excuse me, what What on earth? So just put your phone down. Can you, it's like, record this? I'm in my pyjamas. What's this? An ultrasound in an hour yeah. because Yeah, pregnant. she's pregnant, so... Well, I'll take it easy. What's this about? Do I have face... an ultrasound just let me in an hour? Let me finish and I'll explain. It's in relation to a Facebook post, in relation to a lockdown protest you put on for Saturday. Yeah, and I wasn't breaking any laws by doing you that. You are actually. You are breaking all. That's why I'm arresting you. In relation to... In How can you children, arrest her? That's... In front of my two children. Can't you just say to her to take the post down? Like, come I'm, on. I'm happy to delete the post. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Right. Yeah. But I have to give you these caution and rights. You understand? Yeah, that's fine. Not, like, I'm happy to delete to the post. This is anything? ridiculous. Anything like, I, this is in front of my... That's Maybe fine. Maybe giving the evidence. You understand that? Yeah, that's fine. But my two kids are here. I have an ultrasound in an hour. Like, I'm happy to delete the post. You also have the right to communicate with or to communicate with a legal practitioner. Do you understand those rights? Yeah, this is ridiculous. Yeah, this is a bit unfair. Come on, mate. No, we, we what about she just doesn't right. do the event? Like, it's not like she's done it. Well, she made a post. I've already committed the offence. So I'm not going to So that's it. an offence. Now, the search warrant entitles us and we're required to seize any computers, no. any mobile devices you have. What earth? Yeah, can I just what get your badge there, mate? It's all there. stress on her too she's pregnant like come on i'm relaxed just a little facebook post now wow be doing that where's uh <laughs> crocodile dundee or a mad max when you need him that video is infuriating too bad we don't have an australian bureau because talk about our latest fight the fines case uh this is much more than a fine of course i don't know what's happened to australia i mean we have seen other videos uh from down under haven't we andrew um you know that young woman that was uh basically tackled by three constables uh for not i, I don't know if it was for not having a mask or not practicing social distancing or both but again i think folks the overriding factor here is what our, our boss Ezra has said on many occasions since this Wuhan virus uh, uh, hit, which is governments around the world of all political stripes and of all levels, municipal, federal, provincial, state, have gotten a little taste of totalitarian power and they really like how it tastes. <laughs> and they are basically eclipsing the constitutional and human rights of the citizenry, and it shouldn't be st stood for. This is outrageous. I mean, a pregnant woman in her pajamas with these uh, 
stormtroopers coming into her house and handcuffing her, because of course she's such a flight risk, uh, that is just absolutely despicable. Uh, they're too close to China is the problem, I think. It's rubbing <laughs> off on them. But if we want to take devil's advocate here and think about why they're doing this, um, they, I think they say there she's inciting a crime by promoting this anti-lockdown protest. Now, if it's illegal to do a protest or to violate your lockdown, then I guess technically she probably is. But they also mentioned in the video, just ask her to take it down. Like, it's getting way too UK-ish there for me, yes. where it's like we're policing... Like, I can't believe we don't do that in Canada, to be honest, that nobody's policing Facebook comments and knocking on your door. But um, I assume that that's the logic they have there. But as the police officer and them, you got to just be like, why do we, we don't need to go to this person's house. Can we call them and tell them that, like, if you do this protest, you will be arrested. That's what they should be doing instead of being like, What's the movie, uh, Minority Report, where Tom yes. Cruise is moving it all around? You're about to commit a crime. A future crime. A future crime. Yeah. says Dave, <clears throat> Future Crimes by David Menzies. That's your next book. Well, I, th I think that's what the name of the, it was the Future Crimes Unit. And, uh, <laughs> you, you know, folks, I mean, uh, Ezra also had mentioned this, and I took him up on it. Um, you've probably read 1984, but reread it. Um, I, I first read that in high school, and I, first of all, forgot how good a book it is. And then I realized as I'm reading it how much more relevant it is in 2020 than it ever has been. In fact, you know, Andrew, I would um, hazard the guess if you could have dinner with any famous person in history who is now deceased, if you could bring him back and have a dinner. I think my pick would be George Orwell, because just to have George Orwell look at the world, especially the UK, where he's from, in 2020, because remember, 1984 uh, was a book written in 1948. That's how we got its title. They just reversed the mm. digits in the year. Uh, to see so much of that book come true, especially during this pandemic, it's actually terrifying and how prescient it was. George o Orwell, number one, L. Ron Hubbard, number two. <laughs> Founder of Scientology. I got a lot of questions. <laughs> Speaking of co breaking COVID, um, if we can just overplay uh, Nancy Pelosi over us talking here. She was caught in San Francisco, I oh, believe, yes. getting a haircut inside of a hair studio. You're not supposed to be doing it inside. You're supposed to be wearing a mask. There's the beautiful and bright and not at all crazy Nancy Pelosi, not at all drinking all the time Nancy Pelosi. Um, Really bringing the chick, what's the phrase? Bringing the chickens home to roost, David? You're the, <laughs> you're the phraseologist here. Well, all I'll say is a holy Patrick Brown, Batman. Once again, somebody in a position of power where it's one rule for thee and, and? one rule for me. And here we have uh, Nancy Pelosi uh, getting her hair done uh, illicitly or illegally, as the case may be. I'm not sure what the rules are in California, but I'll take you on your uh, on your word. That, oh, that better. That, and and uh, it doesn't surprise me. And uh, but that is the type of entitlement that you do find in the Democratic Party, don't you? Today, now there's a lot of Democrats that you could say maybe they got they've got a good heart inside them. They're trying their best, or they don't necessarily go along with everything else that the Democrats. Maybe they're at the lower level, the municipal level. But Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer, Adam Schiff. They're so obviously just complete liars. Like they don't care what how they look. They don't care what actually happens. They just want their money and they want to do their time and they want to get out uh, richer than when they came in. Nancy Pelosi has a huge compound. I mean, yep. the Obamas have a huge compound with a large wall, mind yep. you. I guess Obama wasn't against securing the border, to be fair. I put a, a bunch of polls on my Instagram the other day, yesterday. And it was comparing, like, first the obvious one, Trudeau or Trump, who would you choose? But then I started trying to throw some curveballs, Trudeau or Biden, uh, Biden or Obama, Obama or Trudeau. And most people chose Biden, or sorry, Obama over Biden and Trudeau. And uh, after thinking about that, I want to hear what you have to say about that. Oh, I, would, I would say simply this. Um, how do you prefer your sentence? Death by electrocution, <laughs> hanging, or firing squad? I mean, I don't see much of a... <laughs> well, Obama's policies were much less progressive than Justin Trudeau's, especially when he was mm. before he was president. He was um, against gay marriage. He wanted border control. Hillary Clinton wanted a wall back in the day. Yep. So 
policy to policy, I think Obama is probably better than Trudeau. I don't know if you guys want to super chat us your opinion on that, but as of right now, forget, obviously if Obama was in power right now, he'd be going along the same thing Biden would be, but when he was in office versus Trudeau in office, I think that Obama is probably better. He might have lost more money, but now Trudeau's, what is it, 100 something billion already from COVID? Well, yeah, I mean, what we've seen with this federal government, Andrew, here in uh, Canada is essentially a decade's worth of spending done in six months. Uh, who's going to pay for this? Uh, well, um, hey, makers as opposed to takers. Uh, how do you like the words capital gains tax? I think that's probably coming. And I fear it's only going to get worse right now. Parliament is prorogued uh, because uh, Justin Trudeau ostensibly doesn't want to answer insensitive <laughs> questions about the WE charity, aka the WE Real Estate Development Corporation. And I think when proroguing ends, um, I see Trudeau doubling down on more, you know, here's a check for you and a check for you and a check, you know, the Oprah Winfrey <laughs> style of governance. Um, and like I said, we just can't print money to make the payroll. We've, there's, you've got to pay the piper at one stage. And I think um, one of the obvious tar targets is going to be property owners, that there will be a capital gains tax because this money's got to come from somewhere. The, the, the economics are actually terrifying what's happening in this country, Andrew. I don't think CERB's going to go away. I think it's going to yep. stay. And in terms of fiscal responsibility, where is Doug Ford? Doug Ford, where are you? Oh. You just, be, according to most people, I would say you've just turned into a, a liberal now. And I'm not saying you shouldn't have policies that appeal to both sides. That's how you win. But he, there's been no fight back. There's been no talking about how he's going to save money during this. He doesn't seem to want to open things completely. I mean, like the statistics are in. I'm sorry. Uh, where I'm from Durham, there's three people in hospital from COVID. It doesn't make any sense that there's still mask restrictions or restrictions on buildings. You wear a mask when you go inside the restaurant, but not when you sit down because the wind's circulating when you're walking, you know. But I want to know where Doug Ford is on all this. He's spending money on more nurses and all this stuff. They're spending all this money on protective equipment for schools, which isn't necessary at all because the children don't have it. They're not getting hurt from it at all. And then I guess he's going to resist the teacher's call for double amount of teachers because that's what they've wanted all along. But I just want to know where his spine has gone during all this because he's completely gone, oh, Trudeau's done such a great job now that we've opened this uh, factory. Forget about the fact that we gave China our masks, uh, bought them back from us, back from them, they were not useful at all, so we basically just gave the money. And it was made by slave labor, so you're just excusing all this, and now he's just acting like uh, he was never against Trudeau at all. You know, it, it is kind of sad, Andrew. I mean, uh, for 17 weeks now, uh, with a few exceptions, we've been going out to Queen's Park to cover the protests of um, Yahoo Nation. That is, of course, the term uh, Doug Ford gave to the protesters there, trying to get the economy fully opened up. And I can tell you this, what the, the sad thing about it is I know for a fact, because I asked them, um, about 99% of those protesters that are there did vote Progressive Conservative in 2018. And you ask them today if they would do that again, well, they'd rather decline their ballot or just not show up. Uh, so this is the grassroots that, uh, A, he insulted. Uh, they, they don't really care about that. They've embraced that uh, slur, Yahoo Nation. And, um, and, and secondly, uh, people that are abandoning the party because they see it, it's not what Doug Ford was advertising back in 2018. Remember um, Ontario Open for Business? Uh, I, really? Um, remember that one of the best uh, political slogans in recent decades, respect for taxpayers? That, of course, goes back to Doug's brother, Rob. And I'm afraid to say that Doug is not Rob. Um, but we don't see that now, do we? And you also, when you see what gets my spidey senses tingling, when you see members of the left-wing media um, singing the praises of Doug Ford, you have to wonder uh, who, I, I mean, I'm trying to figure out who are the people behind the scenes? Because true story, folks, maybe there's a little inside baseball. 
But in September 2018, in this very studio, I interviewed Doug Ford, who was then, of course, running for mayor of Toronto. And after the interview, uh, he looked around the studio and he said to me, you know, Dave, I, this, brings me, this brings memories back to the Sun News days. That's where I used to be. And we had, our, it was our highest rated hour of TV ever, Ford Nation, him and his brother co-hosting a show. And he says, what about getting those red, white, and blue Ford Nation signs right here and we'll do a show that, and I said, oh, Doug, you name the time, you name the day, I'll be your co-host. I went into Ezra, Ezra I, it was like a, a kid before Christmas time. <laughs> he was so excited, he was so happy by this. And then the weeks turned into months and I wasn't getting my calls returned and I wasn't getting my emails returned. And there was a press conference in November at King and Bay and it was when Doug Ford was campaigning against um, the streetcar right of way, which has basically destroyed King Street, but that's a, a, a subject for a different time. And after the conference was over, I politely went up to him and I said, you know, Doug, I got to know an answer. I mean, it's been a couple of months now. Are we going to do the Ford Nation show? And Doug said to me, well, Dave, if it was up to me, I'd love to do it. But you see, the team says, and who is this, the team? Who are these people behind the scenes telling Doug what to do and what not to do? And it's too bad that he's beholden to the team, because I can tell you one thing, Andrew, Rob Ford would not have been beholden <laughs> to anyone. He did things his own way. So it's sad, that's a true story. And um, I guess he's just trying to um, make nice with the, the mean girls out there on the left, and he's forgetting about the people that put him into that position of power in the first place. Now we get a lot of feedback from our videos. A lot of them have coming from Tamara's uh, marches that she's been going to. Yes. It's about 60% um, I'll never wear a mask, and about 40% how dare you guys promote not wearing masks. And well, we're, first of all, we're only promoting people with exemptions to not, not wear masks, because promoting people to break the law would be stupid. But it's come to this point where people, you're gonna have to decide if you're anti, um, if you're for masks and you're for lockdowns and all this stuff, you're gonna have to come with statistics because the people that you're calling conspiracy theorists are becoming the ones who are right all along. I'm sorry to tell you, yeah. but the masks barely do anything. They technically block droplets, but there's been no, uh, no substance to the argument that they've prevented the spread anywhere. Um, the lockdowns have not been proven to prevent the spread anywhere. Yep. And then you've got people who are just saying, oh, do you want this to turn out like the United States? Well, there's explanations for these things. You've got New York, you've got uh, Pennsylvania, you've got Florida. Like these numbers come from places. They're not just magically coming out of thin air. There's obviously people condemning protests some places when they benefit them and not in the other places. But if you're gonna be one of these people who are just like, how dare you say this? or Masks save lives. Don't you know this? Why are you pro pushing this conspiracies? You're gonna have to start coming with some facts because the people you're calling conspiracy theorists, they're linking to facts. They're linking to the CDC, which is now um, not allowed to be posted. They're fact checking the CDC with the CDC. You're gonna have to start coming with some facts because when you're emailing Tamara or you're emailing me and you're just like, how dare you do this stuff? You don't have any arguments. It's kind of annoying when people are just uh, bitching at you and then just being like, well, I don't actually know anything about it, but actually, but I think that this is saving lives, and I'm going to freak out about it, but I, I don't have any actual statistics on my side. And you're, having said that, go ahead, David. You're 100% right, and I just want to say, before we get to the Super Chats, because they're starting to uh, jam up there, Andrew, uh, all I have to say is this, folks, uh, to prove Andrew's point, I even know the date off by heart. March 8th, Dr. Anthony Fauci says, do not wear masks this is the worst thing you can do. Complete 180 there. And secondly, I have a query. When it's flu, all my life living through flu seasons, flu is very contagious. It can be deadly to, you know, the same sort of people actually, like the elderly, you know, people with uh, medical conditions like uh, COVID is. Why is it that during flu season, we've never been conditioned and advised to wear non-medical masks? Um, that, that, that's got my, me scratching my head as well. So you're 100% right in where you're going with this, and we got to get to some of these super chats. Lisa Bruce, five dollars. Australians are sacrificing themselves to show the rest of the world what it will look like if we don't stand for our rights uh, now. Protest while we can. 
12.30, uh, that's the time. <laughs> Gordon Smith, $10, just $10, thank you. Paul Forrest, also $10. I'm sure thank Patrick you. Brown's shirt gave this video a thumbs up. I'm not <laughs> sure I understand. <laughs> Stephen, $5. Orwell was an outspoken democratic socialist. It would be interesting to see how he feels about those concepts today. Uh, he's dead, so we can't speak <laughs> about it. Ferris Bueller. Bueller, you got to do that. Five dollars. <laughs> we should seize, confiscate CCC, CCP real estate assets owned across Canada, especially Vancouver. Used to pay debt. Now I'm gonna have to. This is what I'm, I'm talking about, people. Um, you can have a good argument, but when you go. I'm sitting here defending people who are called conspiracy theorists, and then some guy comes on, he says, oh, we need to seize their assets, you guys. <laughs> That's just not a good idea. Well, on, but on the other hand, Andrew, we could have, when they said a couple months ago, return those panda bears from the Calgary Zoo, uh, we could have told them uh, to take a long walk off a short pier. How about this? You want your pandas back, and there was three more years <laughs> to run on that contract. How about you give us the two Michaels back? But obviously, pandas count more than people, and and for Justin Trudeau to be like a lackey, yes, boss, we'll get him on the Concord right away. Uh, that was despicable. We should never have given those damn bears back. People over pandas. That's right. Uh, <laughs> maybe later, five dollars. That's a good, good name. Timothy Powell, another five pounds, which translate to a billion dollars Canadian. Thanks for showing the Australian <laughs> news report. It's important. It's shared so the leadership of Victoria answers and are held to account. Yeah, I don't know what's going on in Australia. Um, they're really dropping the ball there. Like the numbers are way lower than ours. Ours are currently around 5,500 um, cases, I believe, 9,000 something deaths. And Australia's got far, far less and they've locked down for yeah. far, far less. It makes Terrible. no sense. Observer dude, five pounds, a lot of Brits today. Yeah, good. Is it true that Jonathan and even his mom told the police that David pointed a gun at them? Yes, you yeah. mentioned that earlier. We did you can go that. back and watch the video to see that um, that they said that, and then a bystander said that that did not happen. Now, if we can get some B-roll going of the previous video that aired before this of Rocco Galati, I know that pleased a lot of our viewers. Yes. People have been asking for that for months, just that they have been asking for coverage at Ottawa and events such as that. And one thing that stuck out to me in, the, in that interview was the mention of Bill Gates having an interview, and I know a lot of people don't like Bill Gates, interview, or he had a meeting with hundreds of mayors of big cities, including the mayor of Mississauga, um, along with Michael Bloomberg, advising them back in March or April of what to do during COVID. Now, when I say things like the conspiracy theorists are turning out to be right, this is what I'm talking about. They have actual facts um, where they don't, they don't like, sure, uh, some of the stuff about Bill Gates might be crazy to say, but Bill Gates, why is Bill Gates going on TV talking about all this stuff? Why is Bill Gates meeting with the mayor of Mississauga with Michael, a billionaire Michael Bloomberg to talk about what we should do um, in cities in Canada, for example, during COVID? He's a billionaire computer guy. Yes, he probably knows a lot about vaccines because he pumps them out, but he's not a medical professional. If any other person on the other side, if Trump came out and uh, said some, tried to talk about this stuff, which he does all the time, they say, oh, he's not a medical professional. Then they point to Fauci. Oh, don't wear any masks. Oh, he was just saying that so that they don't run out of masks. So he's a liar then, and we should trust him. These arguments need to make sense. And I'm going off on tangents, I realize. But when, when people are, are, are denying these claims that are now proving to be true, admitted by the CDC, you've got to come with some facts uh, to counteract it, David. And well, I'm sorry if I'm rambling. What, what do you think is Bill Gates' agenda? I mean, like you mentioned, he met with uh, Mississauga Mayor Bonnie Crombie. I know, I believe, I'm pretty sure of this, uh, Microsoft Canada, their head office is in Mississauga. Maybe it had something to do with that. I'm just trying to be devil's advocate here. But, but really, what is this self-made billionaire with a B uh, so obsessed about uh, this particular virus? What, what, I, I'm just trying to understand what it is that's motivating uh, a billionaire to get involved like this. Well, if I was his PR guy, I would say Bill Gates has been a philanthropist all over the world. He's been creating vaccines. Um, for children in Africa, which may or may not have killed people, but um, <laughs> allegedly, allegedly, the yeah. Patriots are waking up. Um, <laughs> that, but that's what I would say. He wants to, best case scenario, you're hoping that Bill Gates just wants to make billions of dollars and help people. That's all you can ask from a philanthropist who's making that much money, that he just wants to be the guy that they turn to, just like uh, Elon Musk wants to be the guy that they turn to to do space exploration. Maybe he's hiding the flat earth, or maybe he just wants to be the person who explores space. 
mm. and he's willing to he wants to make a lot of money while doing that. You have to come with way more stuff, uh, way more evidence about Bill Gates' nefariousness in order for people to believe that. But to have a conference call with a bunch of large uh, city mayors is certainly suspicious. We've mm. got another super chat. Uh, no, we don't. That's okay. the old one I was reading. But um, something you pointed out earlier, um, a recent David Menzies story about food benders, your favorite place. I'm oh, yes. That. And it was um, picked up in the Toronto Sun today. Picked up. He'll say here. picked up because he's nicer than me. I'll say stolen by the Toronto <laughs> no, Sun. No, no, no. Was your name in the article, David? Uh, I don't believe so. But Did it, it come a, out the day after your video, David? No. Is it, what was that, Mr. Producer? <laughs> okay. <keep on. laughs> Did it come uh, out the day after? What's the date on that paper? It, it didn't need. It came ah, out today. I but see. you know what? Uh, listen, the more exposure about food banders, uh, the better. Uh, maybe does Mr. Producer have a clip of our report of food banders lined up? I'll let him go to it. Uh, that'll be coming up in a second, folks. But you might recall food banders um, originally got in trouble with their sidewalk sandwich boards uh, saying "f the police." Uh, yeah, you. She used the full F word. And, but she's gone off on a tangent where she's been, um, you know, anti-Israel, anti-Jew, and it's resulted in a whole heck of a lot of a trouble for her, but she keeps doubling and tripling down Can't on the hatred, herself. and now she is um, channeling the idea of those, uh, that low-tech terrorism uh, some people in um, uh, Gaza use, which is uh, arson balloons, where you put an IED onto some balloons, it's really cheap. Sometimes very effective, and it crashes into an Israeli farm, and it starts a, a, a huge fire. Maybe even power lines that would be effective too. A hundred percent. See, knows. the problem with this woman is, is, and it's a problem with a lot of. I'm apparently enraged today. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. <laughs> but the problem with the Palestine supporters, you want your historical argument, fine. But this, just like this woman, she can't help herself. She's posting. Oh, it's not about the. It's not the same balloons. But also, I've posted about those balloons before. Um, David Menzies is terror rising me outside of my outside of my bakery or where sandwich shop just say no I don't want to be interviewed and let it be that you're making yourself look crazy lady it's not us it's not David Menzies he's literally standing outside your store showing your hateful chalkboard and she's like I'm gonna take a picture of this and call him nuts and 12 people will agree with me well that's good for business uh, beyond nuts the last time I talked to her she called me a genocidal maniac <laughs> which <laughs> remains to be seen well I, I admittedly I think I did take out an anthill back in June uh, at your Casa Menzoid. Uh, but you know the other thing, while um, the, the cameraman and I were attempting to get a comment from her, because as soon as she saw us, she locked the door. That's her right. She doesn't have to speak to us. But she was very upset, allegedly, uh, for not getting her side of the story across on earlier reports. And by the way, yes, I did reach out to her. So even that was a lie. But on social media, she said, there, uh, there's Menzies um, uh, at the door demanding to get in. I didn't demand anything. I said, I, I Kimberly, you want to come out and talk about your balloons? And then she said words to the effect of, now I have to worry about a night of uh, killing and raping. Um, These in, threats aren't coming. In that order, by the I way. The killing and then the raping, which I guess would make me... Uh, Saying uh, I'm getting <laughs> threats online is the easiest thing. <laughs> yeah, you probably shouldn't say that stuff. So anyways, we should, we'll run a little bit of our, our little report of this lovely little eatery at Dufferin and Bluer called Food Benders. Matt Foodbenders for an update and just when you thought it couldn't get any more bizarre or weird, well, it gets weirder and more bizarre. You see, we first brought you the story of Foodbenders back in June when owner Kimberly Hawkins put out a sandwich board like the one here, which now says the police are lying, but a few months ago that signboard said F the police. Of course, she used the full F word. And she also went on to social media uh, to say F the police's wives and F the police's children. Uh, lovely that. Then the story got very perversely ironic because there was blowback against Hawkins from those who are pro-police. And what did she end up doing allegedly? Well, <laughs> calling the police the entity that she wants defunded and even abolished. So a bit of um, perverse hypocrisy there. Um, Oh, and she didn't do so without failing to mention that she thought the police were behind the blowback, uh, an allegation she has no evidence for. Then she put up the infamous no Zionists allowed into our restaurant. That's resulted in a human rights tribunal case. 
She went on to defame uh, someone who has filed a $750,000 defamation lawsuit against her. Uh, it just goes on and on and on of Kimberly Hall. See, this is what I mean, David. She wants sympathy. She doesn't want her business to be closed down. But she says, like, what cops, children need to die. Yeah, and then calls the cops for the blowback she received while at the same time saying, I know you are behind this Toronto Police Service. Um, the other thing, it should be pointed out, um, that she has said on social media that the Palestinian balloon display inside and sometimes outside a restaurant has nothing to do with advocating arson balloons, uh, terrorism balloons, but rather these are symbols of SOS to the world to stop the brutal Israel occupation in that area of the world. Yet, if she's trying to disassociate herself, Andrew, from the arson balloons, why is she also posting pictures of bona fide terrorists? Because she thinks she's clever. Bona fide arson because she thinks she's cool and clever to like all 500 people that follow her. Oh, I'm going to post this stuff that references this and then say it's not because I'm cool. And like, you're just hateful. Like, yeah. there's no, like, it, outside of your insanity bubble, the rest of the people think you're insane. So, uh, Vito Anthony, $5, five bucks for Menzies for driving girls crazy uh, about a sharp dressed man. So, you got a man <laughs> telling you that you're driving the women crazy. Congrats. Ain't it always the way? Uh, Lisa Proust, <laughs> another two dollars. David, I've got a video that explains Bill Gates on my channel. Oh. So you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to um, email that to David. He doesn't know how the internet works. <laughs> EC, five dollars. Thank you to you both. Love David Menzies reporting. Thank um, you. No love for Andrew. You know? <laughs> uh, Gizevich, again, seven dollars. Mr. Gates and that event 201 was proof enough for the masses, if you ask me. Lisa Proust, who is now up to a thousand dollars, it seems like today. <laughs> Two dollars, David. Your courage is inspiring. Thank you for all that you do, David. Oh, thank I you, Lisa. I shake your hand, but you've got a lot of things. Well, we'll on do there. that uh, elbow bump thing. There you go. It reminds me of those '90s dances, were, yeah. or TikTok dances. <laughs> we, I think we've got one reel on our Instagram, and it's David dancing, doing this I, from the side. No, folks, if you see anything of me dancing, uh, that's trick photography. We got some uh, really that uh, flash <laughs> photography. Those kids are talking about. <laughs> yeah. Flash. Um, what should we talk about, David, before we leave here? Oh. We've got Chris Cuomo um, saying stuff on uh, Michael Cohen, or we can go to a member of the DNC talking out against riots, or we can go to my video. I'll let you choose. Oh, you know what? Well, uh, since you're here in the chair, well, why don't then. we go to your video then? So I did. We, we can bring up some brief... Mr. Producer says he does not have your video. Excellent. Unbelievable. So you're going to have to go in five minutes um, back to our video channel. It's about the CDC 6%. A lot of people think that the frames that people have been showing from the CDC saying that only 6% of the deaths um, from COVID. They, a lot of people have been saying that's fake. So I just went to the CDC website. We got the screenshots. We got the editors to pull everything together. And I did a video about it. A lot of the stuff that I talk about today. So 6% of the CDC, 6% of the COVID deaths says the CDC are from just COVID alone. There's no other, um, what's the, pre-existing pre conditions, right. co comorbidities. And then I guess by way of elimination, 94% of the deaths had it as well as other things. And on average, the people who d have died from COVID had two and a half, so two or three different pre-existing conditions. Mostly were the flu, pneumonia, um, heart failure, lung failure, stuff like that. Now what cannot be lost, and this is what people say in the comments of our Twitter be without watching the video is, oh, it's more complicated than that. Like, first of all, we're just using the CDC's data here, so it's not nefarious at all. But yes, people, COVID attacks people with pre-existing conditions. It can leave lungs, tissue scarring, it can do a lot of stuff, and it is more harmful than the regular flu. But the fact is that only, uh, it's the thing, what I said in the video was less than 10,000 or less than 12,000 people have died with just that. So it's not actually that many people. Is it dangerous? Yes. Is it contagi contagious? Yes. Is it worth locking down your country and like having people fighting, having a race war almost in the United States? Yep. Is it worth all that? No. And I defy you to explain to me why, and they almost never can, David. And, and Andrew, let's not forget, we have spoken to doctors and nurses who tell us how the numbers are being artificially ginned up, which is to say, if you and I were walking down Young Street and one of the cranes building a condo dropped its steel girder and were crushed right on the sidewalk, if in the autopsy it was discovered that you or I was COVID-19 positive, guess what? 
goes into the death as a COVID-19. Well, it goes sad. into the books as a COVID-19 death. I mean, th this is outrageous, and, and this is actually happening. That's an extreme fictional example, of course, but people that have had cardiac arrest, other kinds of um, uh, immediate uh, ailments that brought upon death, if it was found out later that they were also COVID-19 positive, it's a COVID-19 death. That is outrageous. I really hope that in the future, the not too distant future, and there will be thousands, I assume, of inquiries and royal commissions the world over about how we've handled this, that these inquiries and commissions will expose the chicanery that's been going on thanks to this uh, uh, pandemic. Your example there sounds like the movie Final Destination. I don't know if you've ever seen that, where just everything goes wrong. Shout out to Sean William Scott, a.k.a. Stifler, in that movie. We've got one more super chat, and I think we have to go. And then we got to go, absolutely. Kathy Monton, or Monton, if we're being French, $10. It's about fear in the Agenda 21. Check Rosa Quar interview on Spyro Scurus YouTube page. Check Sasha Stone interview with two Aussies on Alb Droid YouTube page and the grip of treason. Here, before we go, here's another problem I have with a lot of these things, <laughs> <laughs> is guy reading off of screen that I find attractive is not a valid source. Anybody has, a, this, it's not a special access to information this person has. We all have the internet, so you can't rely too much on these large swaths of text from 4chan because that's where it's all coming from. Now we're going to say goodbye. Two videos you need to go watch after this is my CDC video yes. and the Rocco Galati interview, which I know a lot of you are gonna love. Yep. Ezra did a great job interviewing him. The guy is sassy, he's spicy, he's got facts. He's a character. He's isn't a character. He? Yeah. And, um, and then David Menzies, um, watch moves at sandwich shop, uh, food benders, the last food bender, the last style benders, there's a co connection there. I think <laughs> oh yeah, the air benders. Um, yeah, what does, even, what does food benders even mean? I mean, even the name is uh, <laughs> bizarre. So thank you for your super chats. Sorry for my rants. Sorry for David's rants, more importantly. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you for the super chats. Thank you to our uh, producer, uh, Justin and um, Andrew. Thank you for filling in in uh, Ezra's absence. And we, that is to say, Sheila and I, will see you in this space at noon Eastern tomorrow. In the meantime, be safe and have a great day. Follow me on Twitter. Bye, Nicole. Bye, everyone. <laughs>